Hey all, hope you're well. I thought it'd be good just to talk to you about the wet underfloor heating system that I put upstairs whilst you see me working and installing the system. Now, I do install this wet underfloor heating system upstairs in a bedroom as well as two bathrooms and I will also be fitting it again in another bedroom when that time comes. Um, this system that I went to put in, which I will talk about in detail at the end of the video in terms of issues that I had, as well as the costing element, as well as another vendor that you may want to look at. But when you're looking to install this, like any flooring or anything like that, when you're upstairs cutting out the, the floorboards, etc., it's all about the prep work. So you see me here just putting an extra noggin in um, along the timber joist because I wasn't quite comfortable with how much of the chipboard flooring uh, was going to be sat on a very thin joist and I didn't quite like that. And the reason I cut it like that is because I had to avoid loads of nails, etc., in the original floorboarding. Now, what you see me and my missus here is having another argument where she's telling me that I'm doing it wrong. And even though I've already laid this system before, um, she's still just telling me that I'm doing it all wrong. Now, when you're putting this upstairs and when, or even downstairs, if you're doing it on a suspended flooring, um, you need to obviously just plan for where the pipes are gonna come in and out of the actual floor. And from that, because you'll see in a minute, the two different board types, which is a return boards as well as a straight board is you need to offset the two return boards against each other and then install the return board underneath so return boards have four grooves and the straight boards only have three grooves within them now what you need to do is decide to plan out where you want the pipes to come up through the floor and when they also disappear through the floor uh, underfloor heating piping is extremely um, durable in terms of you can move it around quite a lot but it's not you know 100% flexible and things so if soon as you get a kink in it you are basically knackered so if you're doing a large run of 90 meters etc upstairs or downstairs and um, you need to make sure that you plan ahead because trying to then remove all the piping if you decide to, to have an issue with it and break it it's going to be really hard to pull it through as you see me here I'm just shooting the laser over the floor that enables me to follow the joist. That then enables me to choose the cuts on the boards to make sure they're all straight, they're all in sync with each other, and it just gives them appropriate cover sat on a joist. I then go ahead and fill in all the gaps in um, between the two return boards. And as you see here, as I said, the, throw, the straight boards only have three grooves within them. I'll then mark it simply as measuring it all, and then I'll just cut the boards to fill in the gaps. What you don't see me do on this particular part of the video is I do temporarily just screw down this flooring so that I can walk in and out because what you'll see me do on this video is quite a few costume changes. So I've spread this out over a few days. Like I said, I have done this over a couple of rooms. So it has taken me some several days to actually install this system upstairs. And I've simply just quickly screwed down the boards just so I could walk on them whilst moving around the house. What I then actually do is lift all the boards in general, I then actually glue them down to the joist with um, D4 glue. After applying the D4 glue, I then screw the boards back down to the joist. Now, what you've just got to be careful of, like when you're screwing anything down through joist, is what is actually in or over a joist. So if someone previously has just cut like, or chiseled out a part of the joist allow cables or pipe work to go through just be mindful of that what you see me doing here now is i'm simply measuring out i'm actually calculating the amount of pipe work that i need to pull through the floor in which you'll then see there so what i've been doing is i pre-calculate the the amount of runs that i need and then i simply pull the piping through to start with I then have to go and fit all this metal sheeting. What this sheeting does, and it is required, it actually really heavily grabs the piping to keep it secure, so therefore it doesn't flex up or um, move at all, and it really does keep it nice and solid. What I actually do, though, is I use my rubber hammer just to hit it in a bit better, really. It saves me just using my palm and my hands, but you can actually, as you see, just push it in occasionally, and it does actually go well. The metal sheets also act as a thermal pad so that all the heat that comes travels through the pipework is then reflected and pushed up from the heat pad of the metal sheet. What you're gonna see now is the painful part of me literally pulling through pipework. Now, this wasn't taken from the bathroom that you just see me doing, it is actually in the bedroom which you're about to see in the next shot.
Now, for structural integrity of the floor, it does recommend, this is what you've got to be careful of, make sure you clean all the floor before you put anything down. So for the structural integrity of the floor, it does recommend you use six mil ply. I've actually upgraded to nine mil, um, purely for the fact that this particular room is extremely heavily wonky. And the reason for that is the joists are just on two different setups in the house. It goes from a high point over here to a low point in the bathroom. So it all goes into that direction there. And I just wanted to, to just give it as much help as possible with least flex. So I've gone for nine to give it a bit more structural across the floor. So yeah, I'm gonna now get into this. You're gonna watch me do it. I probably won't start video me getting the start of the, the start of the sheets going. The reason for this is, surprise, surprise, this wall here isn't straight. I'm going off that side, which is as straight as I think it can be. I've got all my angles. I'm gonna shoot laser levels, you'll see. But I'm gonna start getting this floor down. As when I laid the chipboard flooring, the plywood is exactly the same in terms of the care that you need to put. So I'm marking out the lasers of where the actual joists are and that gives me the ability to know where the screws need to go into, as well as when I laid the chipboard floor in, I already knew what danger was there, so I've marked on the chipboard floor in previously, if there's like a cable, for instance, which is relatively close to it, and it hasn't been put through correctly with the joist and things, and just so it just gave me as much protection so I didn't you know, cause problems moving forward. So the runs are actually 20 centimeters apart, so they also it gives you a bit of a guide. Now, the reason I shot these laser levels all over and all these lines where you might think I'm being overkill is because my actual joy system, like I said, isn't straight. So it's pretty painful, it's pretty hard for me to just simply work off right angles to understand what I need to do to make sure I miss pipe work and also hit joists and things like that. So when I've laid all the large sheets of 2.4 by 1.2 meters, um, that just left me the rest of the, the edge of the room to doing cuts. Now, because my room isn't straight, those cuts had to be slightly angled and things. But as you see there, the same principles the same where laser levels being shot to mark a joist. I then from that joist marking enables me then to move on to drawing out with a large wiggly line of where the actual return of the pipework is. This then means that I can work around that pipework and I'm not at any point if it falls on a joist screwing through the pipe. Something that I was a bit annoyed about when I came to put this manifold in that I wasn't made aware of and possibly I think it was maybe my fault for the lack of understanding, lack of questions that I asked, but when I bought my unfloor heating kit, I've purchased wireless thermostats. Now, wireless thermostats to me mean that they're wireless. They're not, you know, wired in as such. So I was just told that they needed a power feed to the, the thermostat and then they talked to the the manifold um, to control on off temperatures and everything like that. Now, this manifold does have a data cable connected to it through, obviously there's another electricity uh, system that I'll go into at a later date, but I just want to talk about these, these cables. So it's gonna have the data going to it. This is my thinking on it. Data cable going to it, that then transforms into the electrics the actuators get wild into the electrics and therefore in my head, well, that, that's it, it's done. So if I want to switch them on, I'd have them on the on the wall, a box controlling it as such, as well as on my phone, wasn't really that bothered about that. And that's how in my head wireless worked. Turns out that is not how it works. And every single thermostat needed to be wired directly to the manifold. And it is generally a good job. I actually got told that by the electrician when he came round to do some other work in the back room because I wouldn't run those cables. I was just under the impression, like I say, as long as I took a feed directly from either a light circuit or a socket, you know, to create power to it, it was spurred off and things, it was going to be done. Now, when the sparky came round and he said, eh, eh, that's not how it works, I was a bit like, eh. So thank God he came and he told me that because otherwise this wouldn't have been possible. And as you can imagine, getting 10 cables throughout because I have got 10 different uh, zones, not a single um, zone is controlled by one or anything like that, multiple 
you know, zones. There are completely 10 different zones that I've, I've piped in. And without knowing all of that from the Sparky telling me I would have been up Ship Creek. So that has been my problem that I had whilst laying the underfloor heating system upstairs as well as downstairs for the electrics. So for the underfloor heating upstairs and the kit that I do is I put a link in what, I, what I've purchased um, and things so you've got an idea and it's also what I will be doing for the garage etc because I've already purchased all the boards and stuff is those chipboard flooring is absolutely fine as if you know which and basically you can control the floor and the joists from the start and the reason I say that is the boards have no give or no change direction other than up down up down up down and, and that's it and don't get me wrong if if you're doing that that's absolutely fine and it's worked for upstairs but it is quite painful as you saw when I've got to dig and cut holes and pull the pipes through and then you want to change direction it's, it's quite painful and also if you think if you want to start going around objects for example like if you want to leave out the bed you can you can't and then those metal trays again they're an add-on if you want to well you've got to put them in in order for the pipe to stay down on the boards but I mean it's pretty rubbish in terms of I'm not saying that the system's rubbish for performance wise but I'm saying this it's pretty rubbish that they're not already integrated into into the flooring and things like that which leads me on to my next thing which is something to consider which is the there is a product there called Omni who I spoke to and the reason I didn't go with them is for which I'll get in a second but their products of what they offer in terms of their boards are much, much, much better than what I've got. And what they do is they allow the boards to go down and in those groove of those boards is multiple directions. You're not just set on one direction, which is what I'm restricted for. Uh, you can go left, right, up, down, side and everything like that and curve it back. So they're much, much, much better in terms of that, as well as second point, which is They've already got integrated within it the heat like foils and everything so again you're not got to do a second bit which is like what i did which is hammering all those those metal foil um trays so that aspect is a winner now the downside to that the omni products which is all i wanted to buy was the boards you know they still use the same size piping that i had and everything like that they would not sell me the boards unless i purchased the pipe fine I purchased the pipe. Then they said they'll only sell me the pipe if I purchased their manifold and pump, which then that didn't feasible with me because I already had this gear purchased already. And again, the price of just doing the upstairs alone for those three rooms, no, sorry, they quoted for three rooms and I think they did the front bedroom again, which is only some more pipe and a bit of boards. They quoted £6,000, which was obscene amounts compared to what I've paid. So I've paid for upstairs and downstairs. So I'll do, I'll, I'll put on screen now, I'll tell you what, I'll put on screen all the gear that I've purchased in terms of price wise. And that will include the manifolds, actuators, actuators, pump, valves, hundred, uh, a thousand meters of piping, uh, 10 thermostats, internet gateway, Heat miser, electrical system, chipboard flooring, and metal plates. I think that's that's it. Maybe a couple of other little items like the thermostat valves and things like that. And basically, the entire system. I will put that on on the screen. How much it cost me down below, because I inquired about just the upstairs only. So it was for a very small manifold and everything like that. And so I've already got my 12 port, so I didn't need to buy the Omni manifold. I don't need the, the, the piping and things and, and stuff like that. So yeah, I hope that's a benefit for you. I hope you get an idea. Apologies for the lack of content on the channel. The reason for that at the moment is because I've taken so much time off just to do this build. I'm literally starting at eight o'clock. I am finishing at around about 6.30, 7 o'clock each day. Keep following, keep subscribing. I hope everyone's well. I'll catch you next one. Peace. Oh, Bloody old. Oh.